morning campers. Um, I have to speak slightly quietly because everyone's asleep. I've got a very loud voice. Don't wake them up. As you can see, there are almost all the lights are solid. Um, it is 7:15 in the morning. Following on from yesterday, it's actually showing 100% charge with just 22 minutes to go to complete the charge off. And it's 7:17 in the morning. So what that actually means is, thank goodness, when it said 15 and a half hours, it didn't really mean 15 and a half hours. So that's good. Um, I think that means it was, I think 12, 12 and a half hours you have to charge. That's what it's taken, 12 and a half hours, which is well within the time. I started fairly late, didn't I? I started about 7 o'clock, I think, charging. Um, so it's fine. Yeah, 12 and a half hours to charge to full from a, almost a completely dead battery on a trickle charge. So not bad at all. I'm quite pleased with that because I was as as I left off yesterday, we thought it was going to be 10:30, which would have been a bit of a major problem considering we leave at 8:30 in the morning. So it's all good. Today is looking a positive start. Okay, that's what it's charged up like. And just unplugged it. Just about to leave the house um, so yeah we're on our way to school the first school run in the car and then straight on to work and then probably into Gloucester to pick up a parcel for work and try and use a rapid charge in Gloucester again I'll probably call ahead before I do that so yep one thing I did notice I had this problem yesterday terrible knocking noise from the back of the car it's because when you put the handbrake on when the car's on like I've just done you heard it depressed there's no warning light. So, and you let go, and there's no warning light. Let it go, there's no warning light. So you can drive along with the handbrake on, and then realize it stinks, or you hear a terrible knocking noise. So that's just an interesting point. I shall test that later again properly. Okay, we've traveled a mm, quarter of a mile, probably, at the most. It's three degrees C. The battery's gone from 99 down to 96. Um, so, yeah, that's an interesting one again. It's dropped three percent in I don't know 400 meters 500 meters probably something like that. so that's an interesting one Okey -dokey. okay so um, we've traveled I'm not sure now uh, probably about yeah about three miles probably um, and the battery's down to 92 percent it's three degrees C and I've got the heat on to 20.5, it's up to 20.5 now. So the climate control's on, no air conditioning, of course, just heating. Uh, today, it should, it should cope fairly easily, I would have thought. I've got to go to work, which is it's five, approximately five miles away. I'm going to Gloucester, which is approximately 10 miles away. And then back again, of course. So we're talking 20 odd miles, probably 25 miles to the, where I've got to pick the parcel up from. There's a, that fast, fast charge point in Gloucester. So if I go there today, I'll have to make a decision on the way in whether I think I should go there or not. I'd, I'd ideally not like to, really, in, an, in your sort of almost standard day. It's, it's more, it's about 25 more miles than I would usually get on my on my normal day. Because um, I'm travelling to Gloucester to pick up a parcel, which I don't do very often at all. And I get delivered direct to, to my work. Um, so I'm, I'm kind of hoping that I can just bring it back this evening and charge it up. But we'll see where the battery is and I'll keep posted throughout the day to as to how it performs. Okay, I've arrived at work. It's the battery showing 87%. Uh, on the guess meter it's showing 70 miles. Um, I've travelled 6 miles. So it's dropped from 99% down to 87% in 6 miles. Um, if you tie that back up, uh, it works out again at 60, it's going to give 69 miles at its current rate of range. So the guess of me is pretty much spot on. Um, so it's about the same as yesterday it's working out. And to this morning, I've got it on eco, but today I'm not going to drive. Um, I'm not going to drive any different. I'm just going to drive. Um, I'm going to be driving different to yesterday. I'm just going to drive it like a normal car, but in eco mode. Um, I'm going to drive it with the heat. I'm not turning the heat off and winding the windows down, especially at uh, three or four degrees. So um, yeah, I'm going to just drive it normally today, but on eco mode. So at least it's set how Nissan would like you to drive it to a degree. Okie dokie. 
Today is in fact the first day that I've actually driven on roads that aren't covered in water and it's not tipped down with rain. So the, the noise level, of course, is reduced greatly. Um, it's really, really, really quiet. Um, one of the things I've noticed is he's really, really careful that you're not breaking the speed limit. So he's just whizzing along the road and you think nothing of it really. The noise is so quiet. And of course, you don't get the vibrations that you get with a diesel or a petrol. You don't have to change gears, so you're not you're not actually really aware of what speed you're doing. But guess what? That's why they put the speedo so high, so it's right almost up in the field of vision. So that's uh, that's that's another little point, really. That we be careful of how fast you're going. I was I was in a 50, and I suddenly realised I was doing a lot more than I should have been, and didn't even realise. So um, yeah, very very quiet on the road, and. You can't really tell through feeling through the car how fast you might be going. You don't get any of that top end vibration or anything like that. So you just need to check your speedo a little bit more often. Okay, I've come into Gloucester. I've actually stopped this place. I've, I've just spoken to Car Wings, well, 30 minutes ago. Um, and they said that I should be getting more mileage and I should be getting blah, 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 blah. Um, I won't go into it all now, I'll do a video later. Um, but the people in Gloucester today, I've had to borrow the car from again to access a fast charger. They've told me that you can't get a card with this fast charger here. He's come into the service department and actually asked for the card. It's not 24 hours, because the barriers of the actual complex get shut at 7 p.m. So, even if you did have a card, but they shut obviously at 5, 5.30. So, um, yeah, I can still use it here in the day, between operating hours of this Nissan garage, as long as I request a card. They were telling me otherwise, um, Car wing said you should they should be able to give you a card, but that's not the case apparently. Anywho, I'm in Gloucester. I've now done a quick charge, a rapid charge, sorry, and that's at 89%, so I can do 80 miles. Bye. It's very interesting. I've done that fast charge, and on the app it said I could do 85 miles, um, which is unusual, but not only that, um, on here I'm driving along, it says 83, that's the first time that's changed. And that's significantly higher than it ever has been. I don't really understand that at all, if I'm honest about it. 89% battery and available 83. Guess of 83, which is it's always guessed at 80. At 99 or 100%. So, hmm. Interesting. I'm not sure what's changed there. Uh, temperature's displayed as 6 degrees. Uh, interesting. That's given me miles, well, miles more, but it's given me quite a few miles more than um, it ever has done. And I'm now only 90% charge. Well, 89 actually, so. Interesting. Worth noting on the way in, I wasn't really driving economically. It was on eco, but heating on. Just put my foot down. Not really trying to drive economical because I don't plan to do many miles today. So that's that's the only downside. If you do drive like that, you almost need to drive economical all the time. I mean, this is the biggest letdown of this car is its range, basically, not how it consumes power. Particularly, obviously, the two are tied in, but its range. If it was 200 miles, it wouldn't matter. The fact that it's 70 is a you know, if you I choose to go to Gloucester to pick up a parcel and absolutely pin it there, pin it back. It's the, I'm going to eat to the range of something chronic. It's going to be like 20 miles left by the time I get back. If you then, you know, you weren't planning to go out, but then if you suddenly thought, well, we're going out, someone rings you up and says, oh, we're going out here, or you want to go out there, or we need to go and do this, or it's an emergency, you might find yourself in a position where you wish you hadn't uh, had fun while driving. Absolutely pinned it. Not saying there isn't fun in collecting trees and driving as economically as possible to get as many miles. That's a game in itself, but... One thing is worth noting, there's lots of ones, isn't there? Um, when you put it in, when you leave it in dry, it's always trying to push forward. So if you're sat in a queue and you think you're going to be there for longer than a few seconds, I would recommend, for efficiency, pressing the park button. That way, you're not, you must be holding the motor against the brakes otherwise. And of course, that's just wearing, it's putting power into the uh, motor. So you put it in park, kills the power tip there that I've picked up <laughs> really got to say 
this thing off the line is brilliant. It really is. One of the most fun you can have. You got someone flat out driving like a loony. You can put out some lights. You go in the slower lane, they're on the right other side. Take it off eco, slam your foot down. Brilliant. Leaving for dust. It's really, really good. And then switch it back onto eco. If you want to have some fun, every now and again, instead of all this rigid driving, just unpress the eco button. Brilliant. I'm actually pulling off route here to go to a new Asda that's been built to see whether there's any truth in the fact they've got a charge point. I don't think they will have. It's brand new though, so if they're making efforts to put charge points in, you would kind of hope. It's hard to believe they're actually going to do it though, to be honest. But we will find out, won't we? Uh, it doesn't cost anything to go off route, as you know. So, may as well. We're happy to help. Do you have electric charge points in your brand new Asda? Let's find out. Quedgley. Asda Quedgley. Well done. Two seconds. That's the card. That's the charge cable. And we got two dual charging, and I got this card, which I presume I register. Brilliant. As the Quidgley. Well done. Well done, as the Quidgley. Very, very impressed. Um, so that was a worthwhile little trip, because the answer to that question is yes, they do. They've got a single tower with two cars can charge off it. Um, so this has probably been here. I would say four months. They've had one customer. One. Well, that she knows of, I guess. But she said she was the manager. I guess she said there's only one person's ever inquired about it. And I said to her, that's why, partly why I came in to show an interest for it. So she's handed me a card. They've got, they know more about it. She know she know, almost knows more about these than, than this hand people. Interesting. An Asda worker. But I got a Polar charge where you are which this is the same one that after having a long conversation today with the nissan garage they're a lot bit well a lot more helpful i was more persistent with my questioning today um at, at the garage where's the garage in gloucester um and trying to drill down on the mileage etc and he was saying the mileage i'm getting is about right i spoke to car wings and they've said that the uh i should be getting much more than that i should be getting at least 100 miles but he's saying he's got a new model leaf that he uses a company car and 80 is about right well sorry 70 is about right 80 at best and with the temperature and stuff it's, this is about right so anyway ignoring all that um nissan couldn't give me a card for their charge point i have to basically get them from their service desk and they couldn't give me any cards but he did show me a card like that saying it should have come with your nissan didn't, I don't think. I might check the manual book thing and all the associated bits of paper. Perhaps it's tucked in there somewhere because it's only small. So basically, anyone who's already a avid user, I'd imagine this is just common knowledge. But that's the card. I put it on top of the machine and it activated the machine and said plug a cable in. I haven't got a cable, so I'm going to look for. I need to get a public cable now because you can't. You can't really use these points, especially not ones in Asda. And those, I've seen, those, I'm pretty sure I've seen those charge points elsewhere. They haven't got cables attached to them, so you need to get a cable. Uh, that is what I shall look into now to see what the cheapest cable I can get because Nissan are quoting three, well, two, uh, 200 to 350 quid for a cable. They're not quite sure. So I shall continue. I'm going to pick up my parcel now, um, and I probably won't do another video until I leave to, from work this evening. Okay, an interesting thing to uh, note is that if I've, I've pulled up here now on the side of the road, car is on. So I've put it in park. If I put the handbrake on, it doesn't get a warning light here, where it usually does. Um, but if I turn the car off, so as if you left the handbrake in our car on when you put it home, and you come back into the car, there you go. 
it shows you a red warning triangle. But if I take that handbrake off now, it goes off. If I put it back on, um, it doesn't come back on, even though the handbrake's fully on. Which is not like any conventional car at all. If you pull, start to pull the handbrake up, a warning light will come on. This is broken. And I would have said it's a bit dark to drive along the handbrake line, except for this isn't conventional because it's down by your foot. And you can actually take it off like that, but you can actually just tap it on a tiny little bit. And it's not noticeable with the electric motor because it's got so much torque. So you've got to really, really make sure that that's off. I think that's a little bit of an oversight, in my opinion, because I have driven off were around, not I've set off with it off because of the warning light and because I just know to take it off, but I've stopped on a hill or something and left it on, so interesting. Or not taking it off properly. But I'm glad it's mechanical. That's a bonus. It's a mechanical, not electronic. Yay, that has just got a charge point in Quedgley, so I should try and remember that. Ta -da. I have ordered a cable. So that was the cheapest one I could find. And I went for a three meter and ordered it. And it was the map model. And it was that much money with that. So that is my first month's fuel saving. More or less spent on a cable. Not overly happy about it, but I am glad that I'm getting one. That's how it works, you see, because you're so desperate for one once you've got the vehicle that you, you're tied into buying that cable. And it's really expensive for no reason that I know of, because it's cable with some connectors. Plastic. So, I can imagine it being 50 quid, but I uh, 168 pounds. That's a lot of money. And this I'm going to charge three, three and a half times that. No, three and a half times that. What am I on about? Twice that. Sometimes three times that. So, yep, that's the one I've gone for. Great, isn't it? I'm excited about a cable. Am I getting sadder and sadder by the day? Yes. Home, so I did charge at Gloucester up to 90% on the rapid charge, and you saw the reading there. And that's what I got after coming in home, so uh, all good, excellent. That is what I've got. Temperature three degrees, all good today. And we're actually popping out a bit later, me and my wife, to do some gym work, so that's going to be pretty cool. And that is going to be another six miles each way I think another 12 miles so we'll see where that is after we've done that and then the beast to be up for charging then where are we going? we're going to the gym can't see your face that's probably a good thing is it? we're off to the gym we are this hasn't had a charge since but there's a school door it's like first part of the gym workout is it? I don't really understand that handle. It seems to do all sorts of things. I like that song. It's a good song, isn't it? Yeah, it's a good song. Low temp outside, three degrees, gone it's up. Very cold, actually. Good thing about this, though, is the heating. Jogging. Heating comes on straight away. I'm going to do some jogging. So that's quite jogging nice. Jogging in the gym. This is going to be an experiment. Okay, home sweet home after gym. And that's what we got left. I was playing about a bit on the way back with, uh, with all the info, all the info, and we've got um, 20 miles left on it. I can't get to focus now. No, why not? There we go. Just playing about with that, trying to regen down the hill, and all those sorts of things. Can't see your face. It's really weird. It doesn't focus. There we go. There's some gym work going on. <laughs> um, Yep, so there we are. We're at four degrees. Temperature's actually gone up, it's supposed to drop, but there we go. Um, and that's where we are at. I wonder if I can get this to actually change. There we go, so there we go. Blimey, me, it's low in it, average speed. Driving distance to charge. 
10 hours 30 on the trickle charge. I don't expect it'll be that. That's my economy. Okay, do brilliant. Do some chocolate cake now. Chocolate cake, we're gonna do some chocolate cake, <laughs> shall we? Burn some energy off, consume some. It's all the same, isn't it? Right, that's it for today. I'm gonna to put it on charge and job done.